Now an echo is an example of a reflected sound wave. Remember that sound waves are the ones that we know the most about at this point. So if you clap your hands, then you'll get a sound coming from them. And this is sort of a source of sound that's very small compared to the room around you, but which spreads out in all directions. So it's a little bit like a tiny point, that's your clapping hands, creating a sound that spreads out everywhere, right? In all directions. That's why you can hear a clap whether you're in front of or behind or to the side of the person clapping. Makes sense, right? So the waves will spread out and some of them will bounce off obstacles, right? Whether it's the wall of the room or the ceiling or the floor, or if you're outside, it might be something like a tree or the ground. Now, if the obstacle is distant enough, then we'll get a little bit of a delay between the original sound and the reflected sound wave. And that's because sound takes time to travel. It's not instant. We've talked before about the speed of sound. Because our brain processes sound as if it always comes from a single point, that means that it's possible to trick the brain into thinking that there's a different sound coming from a further away point. The brain thinks that the echo is the sound of a separate event. We echo a clap off a distant wall, then the brain will hear the nearby clap and think, oh, it's coming from those hands. And then it will hear the echo of the clap. That is, the sound wave for the clap reflected off a distant wall. And the brain will say, there's another clapping sound coming from behind that wall. So it means it's possible to play tricks on the brain with echoes. Now it turns out that we can use echoes in order to figure out information about our environment. And the best way to do this is with a computer because it can be very difficult to analyze those echoes with our own ears. This is given a special name when we use sound waves or echoes to navigate. We call it sound navigation and ranging, which normally is shortened to sonar. You might have heard the term before. So sonar is often used to detect submerged objects that are underwater. We'll get boats like this one sending out sonar pulses down to the bottom of the seabed. By listening to the echoes, they'll be able to tell how deep the water is and whether there are any objects submerged in that water. So it's possible to use it to detect submarines or to detect sunken ships and figure out exactly where they are. What is an echo? We have a few options here. A sound wave transmitted into a different medium. A sound wave reflected from the boundary between two media. A sound wave where the wave fronts are flat or a sound wave incident to another medium. So all of these are about waves. When we think about an echo, we think about a copy of a sound that we've just heard. So which of these would produce a copy of a sound that we've just heard? If we look at the first one, a sound wave that's transmitted into a different medium will never actually reach us because we're not changing medium. If we look at, say, C or D, these could just be ordinary sound waves. They're the wave that we hear initially, not the copy of it. So in fact, the only good answer is not D, not C, not A, but in fact B. So whenever a wave reflects, it reflects because it is passed into another medium and part of it has been transmitted and part of it has been reflected. And this reflection is what we hear as an echo. What does sonar stand for? Is it sonic articulator, sound navigation and ranging, sonic observation narrow amplitude range, or sound output nautical reflection? Of course, the answer here is B, sound navigation and ranging. It might be difficult to infer that from the name, but even if you can't, people tend to use sonar as a separate word and not as an acronym. 